You are watching CIO TV by Enterprise IT World, a production of Accent Info Media. Hello and welcome to CIO TV Live, uh, part of uh, Enterprise IT World Nina Group. Uh, uh, we are here uh, at Titus today, is the first day. Uh, we are meeting with so many people. I am given to understand that uh, there will be more than uh, 1 lakh people over the uh, 5 days in this expo. With me is Mr. Soma Ali, uh, his senior manager, Solution Engineering uh, for Meta Region at uh, Riverbank Technologies. Uh, his forte uh, is looking at uh, or, you know, creating uh, solution uh, around observability portfolio within Riverbank. Let us understand from him about the evolution and journey of uh, observability as a whole, how uh, Riverbed has taken it up, how uh, Riverbed is giving it as part of its solution to the customer in this uh, region. Salman, uh, uh, thank you very much for taking time out to be here to give your valuable inputs uh, around observability. Thank you, Sanjay, and thanks for giving us this fantastic opportunity to come and discuss Riverbed as a technology and as a services partner to the IT industry within the region. Uh, people have been talking about it for the last um, couple of years, if I'm not wrong. Um, from the, it originally it came from the um, network monitoring. Now it is observability. Uh, the piece, what does it cover? Uh, how is it different from monitoring? Um, it's a very good question, right? Monitoring is something which we have been doing for years long. I don't think it's a new term to neither our customers nor ourselves who have been you know, working in the IT industry. Monitoring is something which we do for our environment. And what Monitor used to tell us is if the device is online and offline, which was good enough for some time, but with the ever so growing needs of the IT these days, especially after COVID, when things started to shift left and everyone started to look into how my experience is, where am I using the application from, what kind of applications am I using, and is my experience persistent across which device, across the device, across the network, um, and measure this. That's where observability came into picture. So observability's definition in today's world, and especially I'll talk about Riverbed, um, in Riverbed's eyes is that we want to monitor and capture every single transaction for every single user from every single device and wherever they're using this application from. And correlate the data all together so we can give you the actionable insight for you to take the right decisions in order to enhance the performance of those applications. That's what true observability is all about. You assess, you analyze, you take the feedback, and you apply those actions to enhance the performance of the application which you have in your environment. So now, which are the industry verticals uh, those who are embracing um, the observability piece? Is it the entire uh, industry, uh, you know, uh, including all the vertical uh, industries, uh, uh, up, you know, em embracing, adopting observability? Or uh, there are some uh, early movers, some are laggers? So Sanjay, I would say that anyone who's using applications and their business depends on the applications are adopting and planning to adopt observability. Now, yes, you are right. There are some who are the initiators and some of them who are the laggers. And not lagging because they don't want to deploy this, but because they want to understand how the IT is actually supporting their business. And once they have the business case aligned, for them it's easier to move into the observability front. If you would ask me specifically about what are the industry verticals who have taken this leap and moved ahead, I would say the FSI sector. Um, that has uh, their dependency on the app and the business dependency on the application has progressed uh, significantly in the last few years. I don't go to uh, the bank branch anymore. I use the application on my phone, applications on my laptop, and I continue to do that, right? Um, secondly, if you look at uh, any of the um, online uh, apps, uh, be it my online booking system for my airlines, be it online booking system for my uh, hotels and hospitality, 
or even if you go ahead and talk about hospitals who are providing a lot of their services remotely and doctor consultation remotely as well, I believe that those are the verticals who have taken steps and there are a couple of steps ahead of other verticals in order to adopt the uh, observability suite. But nevertheless, I believe it's something which everyone should look at and uh, uh, adopt as early as possible. So, uh, Riverbed, uh, from a competitive advantage, how are you positioned against? There are so many in competition, I do not want to take the names. I agree. See, it's a, it's a very competitive market. And the reason why it is competitive is because people are, and enterprise customers are looking into observability. They want to ensure that they are providing the best experience for their end user, for the core applications which they're using where the business is getting delivered. We do come across these kind of questions quite often, and I can, I can say that Riverbed differentiates itself from the other competition out there in the market by capturing all fidelity data from the end user experience, from the packets, from the flows, from the device level metrics and telemetry data and able to correlate all of this together via a unified platform. That's what our strength is. We've been very strong when it comes to packed level data analytics. Uh, we've been uh, the biggest sponsor for the Wireshark uh, for so many years. We understand packets very well. We not only look at the network-based packet level, but we also expand ourselves into application and then towards end user, and we're able to stitch the end user experience together with the transactions without doing NV sampling, and that's what we are uh, uh, successful at, and that's how we differentiate ourselves with the competition. Salman, if I'm not wrong, for this reason, even, even uh, those countries or regions which are uh, uh, you know, growing very fast, the bigger challenge is having uh, the skill set in the customer space. You won't find many people are so skilled. And given the, uh, given the fact that the technology are very complex and every uh, quarter you'll see uh, something or, a or other happening, there are a lot of tweaking happening within the technologies. How are you solving that piece? So it's a very important point that the adoption of the solution which you are purchasing for your environment uh, how does it actually work? And the adoption is a journey, right? So from the time you have purchased the solution and you have finished the deployment, that's where the adoption actually starts. And if the adoption is not there, then the, op the solution is always extremely complex, right? And, and that's something which we also hear from some of the customers that the complexity is there because it's touching every single area in the organization. Now, what we do in order to overcome that, first of all, we want to simplify the dashboarding as much as possible and give the solutions users the strength to customize it based on how they would like to see it. So that's one. Second thing is we've made sure that we provide our local services and we support them by offering resident consultant, resident engineers, and we've gone ahead and some of our largest customers in the region who've got multi-million dollar equipment from us, they're using what we call it visibility operation center from Riverbed. So we work with them hand in hand to understand what their business needs are and translate those business needs into meaningful dashboards and work with their team for years long in order to get them the right data and then skill them up in the meantime so that once we go off their desk, they would be able to continue with the similar momentum moving forward. So that's how we run it. All right, so AIML is uh, influencing all sets of life. Uh, all sets of technology, uh, I, uh, observability in the value chain, when you start from the bottom to the top, AIML obviously helping, you know, giving you the entire matrix of the customer or application journey uh, from the code one to the end, to, you know, complete product uh, life cycle. So how do you say um, AIML and uh, the applications or the, or the uses within the observability piece? See, AIML, whether we accept or we not, it's something which we all are seeing and that is happening at the moment, right? And it's not only limited to observability or to specific domain. It's every single, uh, it's with the every single division, right? You talk about networks, it's there. You talk about infrastructure, you talk about observability, it's there. With observability, AIML also plays a very important role. Um, we have a platform, what's called Alluvio IQ, 
that ingest the data from the riverbed solutions which you have deployed in the network as well as the other third party tools which you have deployed in the network and take the information in order to translate this into much more easier form and eventually starts taking decisions on its own. Could be remediation, could be restarting certain apps and goes up to a level where you can actually assess and analyze the licenses which you have on your laptop, unused licenses, end user experience feedback, um, gathering sentiments from the user and then taking the actions based on that. See, AI ML, if I would have to focus specifically on that, AI ML also gives us indication on how the infrastructure is moving and based on that, take some decisions and alert the user on what decisions have been made based on what the events were. Because they need to be correlated together. I want to see those events, why this decision was being taken. So if I want to revert back, I would have the right reasons in place with the right authentic data. And that's where it counts. We, um, as Riverbed, we have specifically been focusing on AIML and our solution is AIML ready just to make sure that we work with customer in today's environment and moving forward in order to take the right decisions in their environment and take uh, impacting uh, their environment positively as well. Uh, thanks, Arvind, uh, for explaining a lot about uh, uh, Riverbed positioning as far as uh, uh, observability is concerned. Now you are already entered into Jitex. Um, uh, we are actually half day gone here. What is your expectation uh, being present here? See, this is uh, my 12th Jitex from Riverbed. The Jitex expectations are always big. Jitex is one of the largest tech event of the year um, in the industry and if not uh, in the world, right? So. Jitex brings us and gives us opportunity to go and speak to our value partners, uh, to our customers, and to prospects who are looking for innovative solution across. Our expectation is to go and strengthen our relationship with our existing partners, explore our relationship with the people who we want to work with, and understand the challenges which we have or which our customers have and address them in the right way. That's what our expectations are. And we hope that we'll, Jitex would continue to deliver what has been tearing up years over years. Salman, I will beg to uh, differ on this point that uh, Jitex is not the largest expo. Today's date, I'll say Jitex is the largest uh, expo. The reason being, uh, if you look at the global scenario, nowhere this scale event is happening. Others used to happen, but uh, given this uh, geopolitical situation, uh, there has been very less football from my experience as a media guy, I'm telling you. So you are at the right place, right time. Now the last question, I'll conclude here. I'll, I'll let you uh, go and you know uh, give time to your customers. How many use cases that you are presenting here? That's very important that uh, when you uh, go and uh, or you showcase uh, the solutions to the customer, they need to relate that that can also be used in their uh, environment. So yeah, so in, in, in Jitex today, we are demonstrating two of the flagship products which Riverbed has. One which is uh, our flagship and what we are extremely well known for, which is uh, one optimization. We call them acceleration solution. So we are demoing our acceleration solution umbrella, which has one optimization and software defined one under that. And then we are also demonstrating observability suite. So we are working we have uh, demo pods, uh, we have our leadership team, we have our skilled um, solution architects who are working and understanding what the use cases are and how can we show those use cases to our customers. And I'll give you a couple of examples. The customers do like to see how the performance is from the end user perspective and what the end user is perceiving the performance. We're able to show that in our uh, uh, on our pods, uh, on our Jitex booth. We are also able to show them what is the value of true unification of observability inside uh, any enterprise network by collecting packet flows and telemetry information. So we're able to do that too. Or uh, feel free to pass by our booth, uh, which is at Concourse 2, and would be more than happy to show you what we're doing. Summer, thank you very much for taking time out. I'm speaking to CIO TV, uh, dot live and I wish a lot of success, a lot of leads in this expo by the end of the fifth year and um, absolutely fantastic talking to you, understanding about the entire puzzle of um, uh, you know, objective.
reservability and the position number two as well. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine, Sanjay. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Mr. Salman Ali, Senior Manager, Solution Engineering for Meta Region at Reservoir Technology. You heard him speaking about uh, uh, observability piece uh, within riverbed portfolio and the competitive advantage. If you have any question or query, you can drop a mail to me. Uh, and thank you very much for watching this episode of uh, CIOP.